We gather here in memory of 20 beautiful children and six remarkable adults. They lost their lives in a school that could have been any school, in a quiet town full of good and decent people that could be any town in America. As a lifelong educator, I know that safety, for, especially for our young people, that our societies, our schools should be kept safe. Um, so I understand people's will, wanting to have guns in order to hunt or to target shoot or those sorts of things. Um, I think there has to be a balance between that and keeping our schools and communities safe. Or fully automatic guns are strictly for killing people. There's there's no other reason. I mean, I, I understand hunting and self-protection, but you really don't need a fully automatic firearm for self-protection. There's no justification in my mind for automatic weapons being in people's hands. Hunters don't use them. If you're going to go hunting, you shoot with a hunting rifle to shoot an animal. You don't need an automatic weapon to kill animals if you're doing that. There's no reason law enforcement don't carry automatic weapons on the streets when they patrol each day. So. They're, they're military grade weapons for military purposes, so it's hard to see why anyone else would need to carry one. I think it has to be put in context of uh, when the Founding Fathers wrote the Second Amendment. At the time, we were a young nation that was struggling for our independence, and we did not have an organized um, militia. We didn't have mil military at the level that we do now. We did not have organized police forces. You know, and people still had to look after their own homes and properties and fight the British for independence. So it was a whole different world, very different than what we live in today. I guess it would be safer as a whole to have uh, shorter magazines just in case there were another shooting. They, you know, they'd have to change their magazines more often, which could maybe prevent less deaths. I think that society has changed. I think that constitution was created at a time when people needed a way to protect their homes for different reasons and the the honest truth is the more weapons you have the more likelihood there is that people will get hurt because they're being used for the wrong reasons so it's it's a little hard to say whether that law is still applicable i think the intention these days is different i think the reasons people have guns are different and unfortunately there is so much access to them that there's a lot of crime that shouldn't happen that does so I think there should only be one bullet taken back to like the 16th century, like George Washington's days, where you have to take a long time to kill someone. Like, I know I want to kill that person, so I'm going to keep this bullet and make me take my time to kill him. Yeah, but if you've got the case with self-defense, and you're going against a guy who has something maybe like uh, that shoots, that's a semi-auto, and you've only got one bullet to go against them, Unless you go out and train with that gun, you're not going to have much of a chance. I am going to train my gun with that gun. I'm going to be the best with that gun. I'll be like dodging his bullet, pull out my one bullet, kill him. Dirty Harry style. I 
think it will be a real challenge. Um, and I think it will be a real challenge to pass legislation that has some teeth in it and it doesn't become so watered down. Um, the political process, not only around gun control, but around many big ideas that affect our nation, are really bogged down by these lobbying. intelligent decisions, you do have to look at data. So I think we ought to look at data of lots of countries that do have strict gun control versus those that don't. And then I think it has to be an unemotional decision on the part of the, United, uh, the American people um, whether or not if we did had a gun ban, and uh, especially automatic weapons, would that affect the number of lives lost to gun violence. To control access to guns in a, in a very serious way to control gun violence. I think other countries have shown that to be the case. Having grown up in Britain and spent 26 years there, people are not shot on a regular basis. If you look at the crime statistics in Oakland or Richmond, it's astronomical the number of people who die each year with gun violence. So there is no, I mean, if you look, if you compare America's statistics to Canada or Britain or any other part of the world, America's statistics on death, on murder by gun is exponentially higher than any other place on earth and the reason probably is that guns are much more easily available and some of those people are killed by accident they're killed because a kid gets hold of a gun or because somebody steals somebody's gun or you know there's all kinds of circumstances some of those aren't even intentional murders they're tragic events that happen because someone gets their hands on a gun Of course the NRA would say that, you know, it's their sort of escape route to saying that, you know, guns don't, you know, aren't the tool to kill people. It, you know, it can work both ways. Yes, people kill people. Also, guns, you know, that's a very good tool to kill people. So it works either way. Well, it's a lot easier to kill someone if you have a gun. It's pretty tough to kill someone if you have a knife or a baseball bat. That's, that makes a crime far more personal and far more motivated. You really have to want to kill somebody to do it in another fashion. Uh, I think that's an insane argument. Guns just sit there. I don't necessarily agree with the National Rifle Association. Several school systems around the United States, rather than keeping guns out of school, want to bring them in. This is Mesa, Ohio. But we believe it's the first in Ohio and probably maybe one of the first in the United States where we're going to have actually armed school teachers. A real possibility in Texas, too, where one state leader proposed state-funded firearms training for every teacher. Would this make schools safer? Wow. Jesus Christ. That's, um, that's really intense. Probably not. No, um, I, so. I mean, that's, wow. Uh, I don't know. Even, I've never heard of that. That's sort of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine teachers having guns in their desks. It's, uh, it's a little extreme. You know? I think it would be a very bad idea um, because there are many people who have the right to carry guns who aren't particularly well trained and teachers are not trained to carry guns and I don't believe there's any place for guns in high schools. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I mean like um, if it was like the old days, maybe, but nowadays, um, it's a little much. Mm. You know, I was a teacher for many years before I kind of moved up the ladder to superintendent. I don't think teachers would want to be armed with a gun, mm. and I am not in favor of having more guns on a campus. I do think that, you know, for instance, at a high school, having a trained police officer, a school resource officer on campus is a good thing. and we should stretch our resources to do that. But arming teachers, no. It'd be kind of creepy having a teacher with a gun. Why don't you do your homework? Sit down, shut up, and read. Bang, bang. No, I don't want a teacher with a gun. No, that'd be scary. Like, Dale, do your homework. Why? Or else I'll bust your other kneecap. No, I don't want a teacher with a gun. In my opinion, I think it's, it should be regulated a little more. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to get a, a gun license right now. Um, so I think background checks for sure is one thing they do right now, but that could be expanded upon and, 
people can for sure um, make the rules and regulations a little more strict for all the all the horrible things that have happened in the world recently. I hope that this becomes a debate that all people participate in. I think it's part of our obligations as citizens to have a voice in this and to not let only lobbyists or only those who have a, a kind of a dog in the fight to make this decision. Every American citizen has a obligation to be have a say in this. You know, maybe an, a, an idea is to try and buy back the semi-automatics and all that kind of stuff? And I think it has to be a combination of factors. I think um, we should think about limiting some guns in the hands of the public. I do think education or, uh, to our young people about uh, guns. Uh, I think looking at some of the ways that guns are displayed in our entertainment industry needs to be looked at. So I think there's a lot of things that we could do. I don't think the question is so much how you restrict guns. It's a question of do you have a developed population a sense of what it means to progress. How many people are dedicated to exploration of Mars today? To the advancement of scientific energy like fusion power? If you had a nation today, if you had high school students today doing research on fusion power and how they were going to create that as an as a energy source for the nation within their lifetime, you wouldn't have a problem today. There wouldn't be a gun issue today. You'd have optimism. You wouldn't have kids addicted to video games. You wouldn't have mental health issues amongst younger generations. You'd actually have a commitment to progress towards a universe that was optimistic and profound and could be acted upon. That's what the gun issue really is. It's only a tip of an iceberg. And that's how you address things like mental illness. That's how you address economic depression. You've got to get the nation moving again. I do think that we need to, especially as educators, be trained to spot when there are mental health issues uh, so that those folks out in our society that have mental problems can get the help they need. I think if we have better resources to reach out to the communities and to the people within the communities, they would have a better chance to help each other and to know what each other's going through to support them in their needs, and then they wouldn't have a need to do that. And these children are our children. And we're going to have to come together and take meaningful action to prevent more tragedies like this, regardless of the politics. You go to war with those you've never seen before I wonder why I wonder why You take the breath of the innocent you've never met I wonder why I wonder why Is it pain or is it anger? Why do you need to pull the trigger? For better days from dawn to dusk They holding hands in heaven Smiling, waiting for us Hey, young homie, what you tripping on? Looking at life like How did I get it wrong? Life's too short, gotta live it long To my brothers and sisters That all pass along Hey, young homie, what you tripping on? What you really tripping on? Life's too short, gotta live it long To my brothers and sisters that all pass along What do we take from this? It's sad to see That for some to see the light takes tragedy But it's not too late Cause we ready to show That it's our time to listen and finally grow Every breath is a gift that we cannot waste So live your life with passion, love and grace